amazing how you all just sit there and just watch yourselves die. Get up. Do something about it. Walter. Rue. Rue. Where are you from? Zambia. Zambia. Kaunda's country. Yes, Nausata. Oh, right. You elected the King Cobra as your new president. I actually know a lot about your country. I spent three years there back in the 80s, and I wined and dined with the likes of Luke Mwananshiku, uh, Willem Ngomba, Siteke Mwale. Yeah, and other highly intelligent Zambians. I was actually... <clears throat> I was actually part of the IMF group that came to rob you guys blind, and we did. Meanwhile, they put us up in a million dollar mansion overlooking a shanty called Kalinda. Kalingalinda. Right, that one, well. Anyway, from there we saw it all. We saw the uh, rich and the poor, the sick, uh, the healthy, and the dead. So are you still with IMF? No, no, no. No, I've moved on to uh, another group with uh, Similar intentions. We're coming back to Zambia to hypnotize the Cobra. I work for a broker who's acquired a, a chunk of your country's debt. And uh, yeah, we'll be handing your president a couple of million and walking away with a check ten times as large. No, you won't. You know, King Cobra is incorruptible. Really? What, can you name for me one, just one African leader that's not fallen for the carrot and the stick? Coach Masire. Fine. Yeah, him. We never got our claws into him. He turned down the World Bank and the IMF. Which was a smart thing to do. We invented the light bulb. And we built planes, like this one, to take us to pleasure resorts like Lake Zambia. There is no Lake Zambia. That's what we call your country, because you guys are as stagnant as water in a lake. And we come over with our big boats, we fish your minerals, hunt your wildlife, and we leave you guys with crumbs. That's what you like, right? Crumbs. That's your staple food. That cornmeal you eat, that's crumbs. That small tilapia fish that you call capenta, that's crumbs. I am the buana, and you are the muntu. I get what I want, and you get what you deserve. Crumbs. That's what lazy people get. I can see you're getting annoyed. Now that's what always happens. You're thinking this one is a racist, right? That's what always happens. Zambia is when I tell them the truth. They go ballistic. All right, just for a second. You tell me, my friend. What is the difference between you and me. There is no difference. Absolutely none. Scientists in the Human Genome Project have proved that. We are 99.999% all the same. Blacks, whites, Latinos, Asians, all the same. And yet, I feel superior to you. Every white person on this plane feels superior to a black person. You can take the homeless white trash on drugs. They all feel superior to you, regardless of their status or education. I could take a hobo off the streets of New York, clean him up, bring him to Lusaka, and you'd all be standing around him chanting, Mzungu, Mzungu. And yet he's a hobo. Why is that? Tell me that, my angry friend. I'm not trying to disrespect. Don't take offense about what I'm going to say. Actually, I'm offended. You and your kind are lazy. When you rest your head on the pillow at night, you don't dream big. It's you and not those poor starving people that's responsible for the deplorable state of Africa. That is not a nice thing to say. You are lazy. Poor and uneducated Africans are the hardest working people on this planet. I have seen them in Lusaka markets. I have seen them on the street selling merchandise. I've seen women on Kafue Road crushing stones 
for sale, and I wept. All of you Zambians in the diaspora are lazy and apathetic. You don't care about your country. You don't care about your families dying of neglect in the villages, dying of AIDS because you can't come up with your own cure. And you call yourselves researchers, scientists. Oh, I'm a graduate researcher. I have a PhD in this. PhD, my foot. Wake up, you all. Wake up. Please just shut up. Excuse me, sir. Would you mind lowering your voice, please? You're disturbing some of the other passengers. You should be busy lifting ideas, lifting formula, diagrams, recipes from American factories, and bringing them to your own. Why do you think the Asians are such a force to be reckoned with? They've stole all of our ideas and made them their own. Look at Japan, China, India, just look at them. The Buona has spoken. As long as you are dependent on my plane, I will be superior to you, and you shall remain inferior. Africans are at the bottom of the totem pole. You should learn to become more innovative. Get confidence. Let go of this white skin syndrome. Make your own stuff, for God's sakes. seen too much poverty. Just don't give a damn. Here, I want you to read something. I want you to read this book, see if you can find it. It was written by a friend. Please fasten your seatbelts, tray tables, and stow away any loose items for landing in Nairobi. All passengers for our connecting flight to London may remain seated upon arrival. This is Agenda Africa, live from London. We're going to take a little breather. When we return, Walter will share with us his insights based on his experiences working in the African continent for over a decade. Don't go away. I mean, with so many young men coming into the labor market and so few jobs to go around, it's only a matter of time now, isn't it? This is a demographic time bomb. That has nothing to do with the issues. All you're putting out is racial bias. These images are not fabricated, they're real. Okay, fine, hold that thought. Then why not talk about the positive stories in Africa? Why go to all the most depraved areas to film and just continue to propagate the negative stereotypes of Africa as a nest of poverty and problems? Because that's what it is. So you're saying that Western media has only negative coverage of Africa? Absolutely, of course I'm. Bad news sells very well. We all feel better about ourselves if we see other people being more miserable. Let's take the average American. He's unhappy he can't get a mortgage. He turns on the TV. He feels legions more chipper when he sees kids in a village that has no running water, no electricity, and nothing to eat. The average Brit or German doesn't give two hoots about the way his country is perceived in Zambian, or let's say, Kenyan media. It's true. Since independence, we haven't done much to foster creativity or enterprise. I mean, let's face it, our continent lacks a workhorse mentality. We behave like one billion civil servants dependent on government paychecks. We. <laughs> We think that development is generated eight to five, sitting behind a desk, wearing a tie with our degrees on the wall. But that doesn't do much to foster fellowship or the excitement of competition or the spectacle of innovative ritual. So do you now concur with Walter? You did vehemently object to his point of view before. Look, I'm not going to take personally what Walter said. But think about this, the intelligence here isn't solely, actually isn't even mainly to blame. The deeper issue here is the political structure 
and the intelligentsia doesn't have any control over that. So last words, last sentiments, if you will, to those Africans out there who may believe that there is hope. From the time of independence, our continent has been marked by tears. It's been an emotionally overwhelming experience. Each one of us has lost someone to poverty, to hunger, to disease. The number of graves is catching up with the population. Isn't it time for a change of political culture? Don't we need a transformation from what is essentially a non-innovative to a superior strategic African continent? We need leaders who are bold, risk-taking, educated. Do we have one in you? <laughs>